Hello everybody, welcome to IT Skills Channel. In the last video, if you were following the series, we were able to show you the Nutanix Tour, Nutanix CE Tour, aka Nutanix Community Edition. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and create a virtual machine, a brand new virtual machine using Nutanix Prism Element. To do this, we're gonna come over here to the home and click the drop down menu, and we're gonna click on VM. From here on, you're gonna see that I have three VMs already created. I'm going to create a brand new one. To do that, I'm gonna hit create VM. And here, I'm just gonna name what my VM is gonna be. Maybe this VM is going to be housing exchange. So let's make this VM as our exchange server. Exchange 2019 or something. So we're gonna do that. And here, name, remember, the name over here does not matter. This is simply a display name. You can call this one a potato if you like and still will be you can still call the vm whatever you want once you actually log into it so this does not matter but it's just this good display name to do it i always use the server name for the name so that way i know what machine i'm logging into and etc after that you can make a description if you would like and i'm not going to do it in this case so next you're going to have to Specify the compute detail. This is where you're gonna say how many vCPU the machine should have. So I'm just gonna say this machine should have two C two vCPUs, and then it's gonna have two two cores for each CPU. So that's what I'm gonna do. Next, I'm gonna say the memory. I'm gonna get it. Give me eight gigabyte. Why not? We don't have issues with memory, so we're gonna get the most. The next thing is. Now that I specify this thing, I'm going to go ahead and actually specify the boot configuration. This is like your Windows BIOS. You want to specify what is legacy boot or UFI. UFI is the standard. Use UFI. And you're going to click on that. And now it's going to say, do you want to do secure boot? Well, the secure boot is not going to be available by default until we change something. So to do that, we're going to change the CD-ROM from IDE to SATA. So to do that, we're going to click on the edit button. CD-ROM type is going to be bus type is going to be SATA and we're going to hit update. Now, if we go up top, we can actually select secure boot. That's what we needed to do. Next, under the CD-ROM bar, we need to go ahead and change the CD-ROM and import an ISO. This ISO is actually what dictates what Nutanix can see when it boots up. So this is going to be our Windows ISO. We're going to click on the drop down menu. I'm going to come over here under operations. I'm going to hit Cologne from image service. Over here, I have uploaded number of images, actually three, to be honest with you. So I'm going to go ahead and actually click on the drop down menu and I'm going to install server 2022. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to hit update. The next thing is now I'm going to hit add a new disk. And next, I'm going to go ahead, click on CD-ROM again. And the bus is already selected to SATA, which is good. And then I'm going to click the empty, you know, the operation type and then click on clone from image service. And I'm going to select the vert IO. This is the Nutanix driver. Without this driver, Windows does not see or Nutanix cannot see the driver. So this is what you need to have to do this. I will try to make an extensive video on how to get this for so far, but I want to just show you here. So I'm going to hit add. Now we did. The essential thing we added our windows iso we added the driver the next thing we need to do is add a disk windows need a disk so this this is going to be an allocated disk and we're going to need to add it so by default i'm just going to say give me my machine with 70 gigabyte and i'm going to hit okay everything in is the default for me i don't have to change anything if i have to change something i can do something else like maybe i can add a vhd or something else but i don't have to do this i'm just hit add now this is the summary of what i got so if i'm happy with everything how everything is i'm just gonna hit okay but i am not done yet i got to add a network without a network nutanix cannot communicate with the internet and we don't want that so we're gonna hit add a nick on the nick i have only one subnet and i'm also selected it's already selected automatically i'm gonna hit add now that we did this we can add you know host affinity i don't have that i don't want to do it now it's another video we can do this and we can add a custom script too if you want to but right now i'm just going to go ahead and hit save by hitting save this machine is already getting provisioned you can see here 
VM create its own process. And this is again fast and it will be done in no time. So once this is done, we should be able to turn on the machine. So we're waiting for this. There you go. The machine is done. It's ready. So I'm going to click on here. Let me clean up this for a little bit. I'm going to click here. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit power on under here. Once I hit power on, the machine should boot up. And it's going to basically ask me, do you want to hit enter to boot to, you know, the CD-ROM? I'm going to hit yes, just like any physical machine. And then I'm going to be able to actually provision my machine, you know, install it. I can provision from a WDS, WDS or SCCM or any imaging tool if I wanted to. But I'm just going to click on here. I'm going to have to reboot it because I missed the key. And then I'm going to hit enter once it boots back up. So I hit, I hit enter. Now it's going to see you loading the operating system files. And this should be done in no time. Again, it's so easy. And I do like the way it just makes things super easy. I know that there's other hypervisor where VMware, Hyper-V, Zen server, they're all very nice. But I feel like Nutanix have a very distinctive future and it does make life a lot easier for IT admins. So over here, now that the machine is here, I'm going to say I don't have a product key. I'm going to specify the server I want. I want to get a data center just in experience. I'm going to hit yes. I accept. I'm going to do custom. Here's where the driver comes in handy. So the driver that we actually put in the vert IO, we need to actually load the driver. Click load a driver, browse. And then we're going to click on our CD-ROM, the Nutanix Vert IO 2.1. And then we're going to click on the server we were installing. Server 22, select six, X64. And then you're going to highlight all of them. And we're going to hit next. And then Nutanix will be able to see our network. Or we'll be able to see our hard drive. it will be able to do everything it needs to do by doing this. So ultimately, that's what we're going to get next. And we're going to hit next. And this is just a standard right now. So I already have another server where this is done. I'm just going to show you that because this is all we've seen this before. I don't want to waste time on that. So let's go back to another server. Here's another server 2022. If I click on launch, this one is already pre-configured and it's done. It's going to be the same result basically. So yeah, this is pretty much it. And uh, if there's any, if you have any issues or if you like this type of video rather, please let me know. But yeah, I'm excited. Nutanix, amazing. Thank you. Have a great rest of the day. Peace out.